Hi, welcome back to my channel Pi by Me Maths. This is by Juvas Devan. Today we are going to solve Statistics 1 past paper for October 2022. This paper consists of 7 questions. Question number 1. The stem lengths of a sample of 122 lips are recorded in a group frequency and the table is given below. A histogram is drawn to represent this data. The area of the bar representing 40 to 42 class is 16.5 cm square. Part A. Calculate the exact area of the bar representing 42 to 45 class. This question got two marks. So we have a group frequency table here and the histogram is drawn using this table. And there is a bar representing this class interval, right? 40 to 42. The area of the bar is 16.5. So what would be the area of the bar representing this class interval? That's a two-mark question. How do we find the area of the bar? If you look at the histogram, this is the class width. The class width here is the difference between these two numbers. So 2 minus 0, it's 2. The class width is 2 times because it's a rectangle so the area is length times breadth so this height of the length would be the frequency density of this class interval how do we find the frequency density frequency divided by class width the frequency is 12 divided by the class width so the area of this was supposed to be 12 centimeter square it has to be 12 centimeter square but in the bar, in the actual histogram, it's 16.5 centimeters square. Why is it so? Because they might have used some scale factor to reduce the, reduce the height or reduce the class width, we may never know. So 12 is being represented by 16.5. Now for this one, we need to find the area of the bar. So here, the class width is Class with this uh, 45 minus 42, 3 times. We are going to find the area of the ball. The height would be frequency density for this class interval. This class interval, the frequency density would be 18 over 3. Frequency divided by the class width. So basically, it's just 18. So supposed to be, it's the area of the ball supposed to be 18 centimeters square. But what is the actual area? You can just cross multiply and find it. So 12a is 18 times 16.5. So a is 18 times 16.5 divided by 12. So the answer is 24.75 centimeters square. That should be the area of the bar representing this class interval. The height of the tallest bar in the histogram is 10 cm. Part B, find the exact height of the second tallest bar. This question got three marks. So in this question it says, the height of the tallest bar is 10 cm. If you draw a histogram using this data, the height will be the frequency density. Frequency density is the height. How do we find the frequency density? Frequency divided by the class width. So 12 divided by 2, which is 6. 18 divided by 3, we get 6 again here. 23 divided by 50, the class width. Frequency divided by the class width will give you frequency density. So 23 divided by 5. So 4 5s are 20, 0.365s are 34.6. And then here 35 divided by 5, 7. 24 divided by 3, 8 3s are 24. 8 divided by 2, 4. We got the frequency density here. This would be the height of the bar. But they are not using the same measurement. They have used some scale factor. So the height of the, uh, the tallest bar is supposed to be 8. But they have used 10 centimeter. 10 centimeters. So what would be the height of the second tallest bar? Which one is the second highest number here? 7. So what would be the corresponding height here? We don't know the scale factor. So cross multiply and find h. 8h is 
70. 8 is 70 divided by 8. So the height of the second tallest ball would be 8.75 centimeter. Q1 for this data is 45 cm. Part C. Use linear interpolation to find an estimate for Q2 and interquartile range. This question got 4 marks. So we have the Q1 lower quartile. We need to find Q2 median and Q3 upper quartile to uh, then find the interquartile range. To find Q2 and Q3, you need cumulative frequency first. Take the frequency and write it here and then just add the next frequency. 30, 53, 88, 112, 120. Once you got the cumulative frequency, the first thing you need to do, look at the last figure, 120. This should be equal to sigma f. Or usually they will mention in the question, there are 120 samples tested and all. So just go read the question. If the question says 121, you got 120 here. That means you have made a mistake adding these figures. Okay, just to cross check. So in the question, it's mentioned 120. So this should be equal to the 120. Now, to find Q2, you take sigma f, which is same as the last figure, divide by 2, 60. To find Q3 upper quartile, 3 fourth of sigma f, which is... Uh, 39 as you find these values and check where these values lies in the in the cumulative frequency first for q2 60 lies in here anything more than 53 till 88 lies in here so take the corresponding class interval so you will get 50 to 55 and then your q2 should be in between here Take the corresponding cumulative and the previous cumulative. 88, 53 here, your 60 lies in here. Now apply linear integration, Q2 minus this divided by 55 minus this is equal to do the same thing at the bottom. 60 minus 53 over 88 minus 53. That's a linear interpolation method. If you don't know how to apply this method, probably I'll tag a video here. Go watch the video and learn the linear interpolation because before you apply this method, you need to know what type of data you are dealing with, whether it's a data with gap or without gap. These stuffs are very important. Now make you two as a subject here. And here, 90, where the 90 lies here? More than 88 till 112 is in here. So 90 is in here. So take the corresponding class interval, 55 to 58. Yeah, Q3 is in between here. Corresponding cumulative frequency and the previous cumulative frequency, yeah, 90 is in between. Apply the interpolation, Q3 minus 55 over 58 minus 55 is 90 minus 88 over 112 minus 88. Make Q3 as a subject. So Q2 is 51 centimeter. Q3 is 55.25. So the interquartile range IQR is basically upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So 55.25 minus 45. So you get 10.25. That's the interquartile range. One measure of Qness is given by Q3 minus 2, Q2 plus Q1, everything divided by Q3 minus Q1. Part D, by calculating this measure, describe the skewness of this data. Okay, in this part D, we need to calculate this and then using this value, we need to check the skewness of this data. So, we already have the value of Q1, Q2, Q3 sub in here. Q3 is 55.25 minus 2 times Q2, which is 51, plus Q1 is 45, everything over the interquartile range. 55.25 minus 45. Calculate this. So the value is negative 0 0.1707, etc. So it's a negative number, so you can simply write it's a negative skew. Negative skew. That's it.